If you clicked on this video already knowing who number one is going to be, welcome back to my YouTube channel. Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. And to all of you who are here for the first time, welcome! We are so happy to have you. I hope you all have had a fabulous week and are ready for yet another fun ranking video. And here on this channel, we are no strangers to talking about some of the most beloved Disney characters of all times, which includes princesses, princes, heroes, and villains. But today we are going to deep dive into what happens when we take some of those most iconic animated characters and translate them to real life. As today, we are going to be ranking all of Disney's live-action princes and princesses from all of the live-action remakes. If you're new here, hi! My name is Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator. I got started over on TikTok but have joined the YouTube community and have been absolutely loving making long-form videos for you guys, of which I have new videos coming out every single Friday at 5 p.m. So to make sure you never miss out on future magic from me, make sure to hit subscribe down below. I would love to have you all join the Disney family as we have such a cute and quaint little corner of the internet here. And I absolutely love getting to share all of my Disney favorites with you guys, as well as hear about all of your Disney favorites down in the comments. So if you have a favorite Disney prince or princess, from the live action movies that you are particularly drawn to, make sure to let me know who it is down in the comment section. And on this channel, while you all may be very used to long lists of Disney characters put in my favorite order from least to most favorite, today's list is honestly kind of short because of all of the official Disney princesses, we really only had a few join the live action community. And likewise, of the princes, only the ones that are associated with their official Disney princess really are counted in the official Disney prince lineup. And so to give you all a full rounded out video, I am combining the live action princes and princesses into one video. So with that being said, we are going to jump into some brief disclaimers and conditions for my list today, of which I highly recommend listening to the conditions because there might be a few prince or princesses that are not on this list that you might be expecting. But as always, if you would like to jump right into our ranking video today, then you can head right to this timestamp. First and foremost, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company and I don't speak for the brand or the company. Any and all opinions in this video are just my own and do not reflect those of the company. But secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these incredible Disney characters down in my comment section. So make sure to leave all of your thoughts down below. I cannot wait to hear about all of your favorite princes and princesses. And thirdly, for our disclaimers, I will be going into some brief plot points for each individual live action movie that we are going to be talking about today. So if there's a specific live action movie or live action character that you aren't wanting any spoilers for, then I would definitely recommend jumping on up to the next number on today's list. But next we are moving on to the conditions for the list today. Today we are ranking all of the princes and princesses who are live action counterparts to an official Disney princess or Disney prince. And when I say counterpart, I do mean that they have to either share a direct name with the original character, or they must directly fill the exact role that the original prince or princess had in their original movie. So just as a brief example, Prince Charming from Cinderella, the animated version. We also have a Prince Charming in the live action version, but he has a slightly different name, but he is the same character. And while those are the only conditions for the list, I do have some honorable mentions who are intentionally going to be excluded today. But they are all for specific reasons, and I'm going to get into that very quickly. The first honorable mention for today's list is the character Chen Hongui from the movie Mulan. Although wonderfully performed by actor Yo San An, this character did replace the character of Li Shang. And although he was meant to replace Li Shang, he does have a completely different character arc than the original animated counterpoint, not ending up as a romantic love interest to Mulan, and also not being a general of the army. Because Li Shang's character was changed so much for the live action movie, we are not going to be including him on today's list. In addition, we are also not going to be including the character Snow White, as portrayed by Rachel Zegler, or the character of Jonathan, as performed by Andrew Burnap. And the reason we're not going to be including these two today is that I'm recording and posting this in November of 2024, and so 
this movie hasn't been released yet. And I totally do not think it is fair to judge an entire performance of a prince and princess character solely based on a theatrical trailer. I absolutely have my opinions, as I'm sure most of you do, on the new live-action Snow White that is coming. But as for me, I will be reserving all of my opinions until I see the full and complete performance by both of these actors in the roles. Nothing against either of them for excluding them from today's list, I just want to give them a full and complete shot. And if my calculations are correct with all of those exclusions, I believe that is going to leave us with 12 live action princes and princesses. And so with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we are ready to start ranking live action princes and princesses. Oh, and before we jump into the list, I do want to go through the brief talking points that we are going to be sure to touch on for each individual character. The first talking point is the live live action film or films that these characters can be seen in. The second talking point is going to be who played them in the live action movies. We're going to be talking about the actor or actress. The third talking point is the character design, including any specific outfits that I particularly like or don't really like. The fourth talking point is any song or songs that these characters have. And for number five, we're going to be going over my personal opinion of how successful I believe the translation was from animation to live action. So without further ado, sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's start ranking some of Disney's official live action princes and princesses. We are starting today's list all the way down at the bottom at number 12, who is Prince Philip, part one. Now, Prince Philip can be found in the live action movie, Maleficent. He is performed by actor Brenton Thwaites. And as for his character design, I will be completely honest, I don't really think it's anything special. He very much looks like a very generic fairy tale prince, which could basically be said of his animated counterpart. This movie plays a lot more into a blue look for the character as opposed to the original where he was more in a reddish color. Although he did have the darker blue navy chest plate, so I guess that could be said. But he also does sport the iconic brown hair that Prince Philip is very well known for. As for the songs, there are none. <laughs> and as for the level of success in translation, well, considering the movie Maleficent is not a direct translation of the original animated movie Sleeping Beauty, but rather the tale told from Maleficent's point of view, we do get a very subtle difference in the character arc of Philip. Spoiler alert in case you haven't seen it, Philip's kiss is actually not the one that wakes up Princess Aurora. It is in fact Maleficent, and so if we're going to take into consideration that perhaps the narrator of the original Sleeping Beauty was not entirely truthful, then I do think this adaptation is pretty successful. From Maleficent's point of view, Prince Philip is not really an important character and therefore would not really show up in this tale. And so in this movie, we don't really get to see a whole lot of this character, as opposed to the original where we actually spent quite a good amount of time with him. And so yes, Prince Philip from the first Maleficent movie is going to go at the very bottom simply because he doesn't really have a lot to do, and I really don't think that's his fault. But regardless, we are going to move on up to number 11 on my list, not straying too far from the path, who is Prince Philip. <laughs> but this time, of course, is part two to Prince Philip. Now, Prince Philip can be seen in the sequel to Maleficent, Maleficent, Mistress of Evil, and this time he is performed by actor Harris Dickinson. Now, in this adaptation, we see a little bit more of Prince Philip, as well as his family. Now, Maleficent 2 Mistress of Evil actually expands on the original Sleeping Beauty tale. So while technically we really don't have anything directly to compare this to in the world of animation, he is still a live-action Disney prince based on an animated character, so we are including him today. For his character design in this movie, he seems a lot more regal as he is preparing to wed Princess Aurora. <coughs> Thank you. For these special occasions in this movie, he is dressed a lot more ornately, but for a lot of the battle sequences, he is dressed very appropriately, but still not the way he was in his animated form. As for the songs in this movie, there are still no songs for Prince Philip, I'm so sorry to say. <laughs> but as for the success of this translation, I honestly think this translation is relatively successful, considering this movie really more so expands on the character of Prince Philip rather than trying to emulate something from the original. In giving Philip more to do, as well as telling us more about his very complex family life, <laughs> we get a lot more of a character arc and development from him, so 
in this movie of Maleficent, I actually think his translation is quite successful. I really do like Harris Dickinson's portrayal of this character, and while I really don't like to compare actors who are playing the exact same character, I only rank Harris's version of Prince Philip above Brenton's because Prince Philip in the sequel has a lot more to do. Even though they are portrayed by two different actors, it still very much feels like a continuation and it makes sense for the movies. But regardless, Prince Philip takes up places 12 and 11 on today's list, which brings us very swiftly to the top 10. <laughs> and normally I say, if you have any idea who's in my top 10, make sure to leave it down below, but this list has just begun. So we'll do that when we get to the top five. Don't worry about it. <laughs> but with that, we're gonna move on up to number 10 on my list, who is Mulan. Now Mulan can be found in the live action version of Mulan, go figure. <laughs> and in the live action adaptation, she is performed by actress Liu Yifei. As for her character design, I feel like the character's design in terms of wardrobe and overall look of the character was very well translated into the live action movie. I really do like the red warrior garments that she ends up wearing in battle. And I have to say, although audiences very much know that we are watching Mulan the whole time, I do think that the portrayal of the Mulan in disguise version, where she's paying in the original movie, I do think that the outfit that they chose for Liu Yifei is actually kind of convincing. Like, in terms of a live action realm, I really do think they did a good job in disguising her to actually fit in with the troupe. As for the songs, there are none. And as for the level of success with the translation, I'm going to be very, very honest. This was not my favorite translation of a character from animation to live action, but I really do think Liu Yifei did a good job with the role. The specific topics that make me not gravitate to the live action Mulan as much include the fact that we don't get a musical version of this original beautiful score. While yes, we do hear an instrumental and beautiful instrumental version of reflection in the background of a lot of scenes in this movie, I really, really, really do wish that we actually had an actress singing this song in the new live action movie. I feel like Reflection is just such a perfect example of setting up an audience to fall in love with the leading heroine of the story. And to not have this song in the live action adaptation, it wasn't my favorite choice, I'm not gonna lie. In addition, in this version of the tale of Mulan, Mulan is given this special superhero-like ability in Chi. She very much is able to do rather supernatural things and is sort of a very gifted warrior right off the bat, even when she's in her hometown. And making that decision, I do get how it would make her stand out and be like a very special member of the army. But in other ways, I almost feel like that sort of then undermined all of the struggle that she went through to actually become as strong as a lot of the people around her in the army. I do like the fact that the original animated movie shows her struggling at the very beginning in order to build her up into a very strong character by the end. And so while I do not have a problem with Liu Yifei's portrayal of the character, I do wish certain decisions were made differently so that way we got a more direct translation of the original animated character. But with that, we're gonna move on up to number nine on my list who is Aladdin. Now you all have heard me talk about Aladdin before and all of his lying habits, <laughs> and I'm gonna do it again. <laughs> now Aladdin, of course, can be found in the live action version of Aladdin. And in this version, he is performed by actor Mina Masood. As for his character design, I do think Aladdin's costumes and his overall energy and design is very reminiscent of his original animated counterpart. While yes, he does wear a shirt underneath his vest as opposed to going without in the original animated movie, I really don't think this makes that much of a difference. And all of the small little details in the stitching of his costumes just makes for a very good translation into a real live action world where we are seeing patterns and fabrics. In addition, Aladdin's prince costumes are also very, very nice and ornate. And while we as the audience, of course, can still tell that we are looking at actor Mina Masood between his peasant look and his prince look, 
I do think the changing into the prince look does elevate him and his stance and stature quite a bit. As for his songs, Mina Masood performs One Jump Ahead, One Jump Ahead Reprise, and A Whole New World. And as for his songs, I do think he sounds pretty good, but I do have to say my favorite of his three songs that he performs in is A Whole New World. I really do think his voice sounds the best on this song. And as for the level of success in translating this character from animation to live action, it's okay. It's not my favorite by far, but that also goes to say that the original Aladdin in animated form is also not amongst my favorites. If you've seen my ranking of all of the official Disney princes, then you will know that I have quite a few issues with Aladdin's character arc and his ability to tell the truth. <laughs> And while I will say there are quite a few differences between this version of Aladdin and the original animated Aladdin, I do think that the overall general energy that I get from this character is kind of the same. I think Mina Masood does a fine job in this role, but the role that we're talking about is not my favorite. I do think Aladdin has a few more moments of comedy in this movie that hit a little bit harder than his original, but not enough to land him any higher than the ninth position on my list. But with that, we're going to move on up to number eight on my list, who is the Beast and the Prince, who are the same character, in case you're confused. <laughs> now, the Beast can be found in the live-action version of Beauty and the Beast. And in this version of the iconic fairy tale, he is performed by actor Dan Stevens. Now, as for the live-action character's design, now, I will be completely honest, for this live-action adaptation, I wish Disney had gone a slightly different route, which is the route that they took for the original Broadway production. In case you weren't aware, the live action adaptation of Beauty and the Beast had Dan Stevens in a full outfit over which computer generated beast fangs, eyes, and all of his other features were superimposed on top of the actor. However, when Disney translated this fairy tale to Broadway, actor Terrence Mann eight times a week would get on all of these prosthetics and fur and fangs in his mouth while he was supposed to be singing. And as difficult as it might have been to have Dan Stevens in the makeup chair for that long, I really do think it would have translated a lot better than all of the CGI that we're getting. Don't get me wrong, it doesn't look bad, but there's something so special about what the animation does, and the way that it was translated to Broadway, if you happen to see bootlegs or recordings of the original, just looks so much more real and you feel that empathy as opposed to what you feel for the live action version. Well, me anyway, this is just my opinion. And I will say same thing honestly goes for Dan Stevens as the Prince. I really don't think the transformation from Beast to Prince is as effective as it is in the original. But as for the songs, Dan Stevens as the Beast sings Something There, as well as a brand new song that was written just for this movie, which is the song Evermore. And I do think this is a very nice song and I think Dan Stevens does sound very good on it. However, again, when there is another version to compare it to, I much prefer Beast Solo in the Broadway version, which is the song If I Can't Love Her. It is such a gorgeous song and I kind of wish the live action Beauty and the Beast had just reused that one instead of the new Evermore song. Sorry. It is very nice and it is very pretty, and if they had to rewrite a new song, I'm glad it was this one. It could have been a much worse song than it is. I am quite happy with it. <laughs> but as for the level of success in translating the Beast, again, because there is so much CGI required to bring this character to life in a way where he seemingly blends in with the rest of this movie, I really do think at certain times in this movie, we do lose a little bit of that emotional pull towards the Beast. If we were seeing the live action actor's real movements behind makeup and prosthetics, I honestly think that might have been a better translation. But I will say all the costuming done for the Beast, meaning the like clothing and garments that he wears, are just beautiful and gorgeous. From his blue formal attire when he dances at the ball with Belle, to his torn reddish cape, even to the outfits he wears as the prince, especially in the finale when he's dancing yet again with Belle, I think all of these outfits are beautifully done, and I don't think the Beast could have been costumed any better. But again, 
just as a personal opinion, I do wish we had gotten practical effects for the Beast's look as opposed to all VFX. But with that, we'll move on up to number seven on my list, who is the character Belle. Now, Belle is of course the leading lady of the live action version of Beauty and the Beast. And in this version, she is performed by actress Emma Watson. Now, as for the character design for the live action version, I think Emma Watson is the picture perfect version of Belle. I think if you pause this movie at any point and look at Emma Watson's performance, she looks like the character to a T. I'm doubtful that they could have cast another actress who looks more like Belle. Now, as for the outfits, that's another topic. <laughs> I think it is quite obvious that the yellow or gold dress in this movie is not really a fan favorite, especially considering Belle's original dress is so unbelievably gorgeous. And if you'd like to hear me talk more about this dress, I did do a full ranking of every Disney princess outfit, which I will link up above for you. I do think Emma Watson has some nice outfits in this movie, but it's just not the iconic ones that we know Belle for. I'm not really a big fan of the blue dress in this movie where her skirt is hitched up and the yellow dress is just not my number one choice for live action princess dresses. Not even close. <laughs> but next, moving on to the songs. In this movie, Emma Watson as Belle sings Belle, Belle Reprise, Days in the Sun, and Something There. And... Hmm, how do I talk about this? I do not think Emma Watson sounds bad on these songs. However, I do think a lot more auto-tune was used on her than what was necessary. When you're listening to these songs, there is a sort of roboticness around Emma Watson's voice, which is of course the overuse of auto-tune. And when you're listening to her, it doesn't sound bad. Like, I really don't think the issue was her voice. I think the issue became trying to make her recording sound more like the original. And in the process of trying to do that, so much of her voice was edited that it just sounds mechanical and robotic. Again, I don't blame Emma Watson at all. It was said that in training to do this movie that she was in voice lessons, and so I really don't think voice lessons provided by Disney would do her that badly. <laughs> so again, I praise her performance for not being a singer, but again, I do wish less auto-tune was used on her so we could hear the real Emma Watson and the real Belle. And as for the translation between original animated character into live action, while on paper Emma Watson is the perfect actress to play the role of Belle, seeing as she has also played a bookworm who lives in an enchanted castle, a la Hermione Granger from the Harry Potter series, in my opinion there's something that gets lost in translation as in the original animated movie, Belle has this warmth and this desire to explore new fairy tale worlds. And Emma Watson plays her with this almost coldness at certain points. And while Emma Watson's Belle does hit some story points very successfully, there are others that I do you think could have used a little bit more warmth and wide-eyed wonderment for the magical world around her. But with that, we're going to move on up to number six on my list, starting off the top half of my list, who is Princess Aurora. Now, Princess Aurora makes the top half of this list because she is the only Disney princess, as of right now, live action version, who appears in two live-action movies. Yes, Princess Aurora can be seen not only in Maleficent, but also Maleficent Mistress of Evil. In both of these versions, Princess Aurora is played by actress Elle Fanning. And as for the character design, I really do think this is a quite good translation of Princess Aurora. Now, is it perfect? No, I will say I do think there is a certain difference between animation and live action, which has to do with angularity. In the original animation, Princess Aurora is honestly very structured and angular and has a lot of sharpness to her that a lot of other Disney princesses don't. And so when we're talking about the live action adaptation, Elle Fanny as an actress honestly has a lot of round features to her. She has these really soft doughy eyes, a very rounded jawline, and so she doesn't have a lot of Princess Aurora animated versions angularity. But that being said, I really do think she looks quite lovely in this role. In both movies, she is costumed 
very, very well, almost to the point where she has this ethereal beauty surrounding her. As for the songs, we don't get songs in either version of this tale, which makes me so sad. God, I would have loved to hear Elle Fanning sing Once Upon a Dream, but a Disney adult can dream, right? <laughs> But as for the level of success in translating the original animated character into live action, I do think this is one of the more successful versions. Considering in the original animated movie, Princess Aurora has so little screen time, it's honestly hard to do less with her in a live action version. And while the live action versions could have totally gone the same route, they actually gave Aurora quite a bit more to do. While it can definitely be said that she doesn't have the biggest, biggest role in the original Maleficent movie, in Maleficent 2, she is a full-on action princess. There are moments where she is swinging from balconies of a castle with only like a bedsheet and some other garments in her wardrobe. <laughs> she is in the middle of a full-blown war and it holds up and she becomes quite a beacon of strength in this movie. So as a level of success, I do think that this is a successful translation from the animated character to the live action movies. However, the word I would not necessarily use is faithful. And again, that's mainly because in the original animation, Princess Aurora was an extremely passive princess. And while that's not a bad thing, Elle Fanning's Aurora, at least in Maleficent 2, is nowhere near as passive as she was in the animation. This version is an updated Aurora and it is simply a different version. Doesn't mean it's better, doesn't mean it's worse. I really, really love Elle Fanning's portrayal of the character, but I can understand how it might not be for everyone. Next, we are moving on up to number five on my list, who is the character Princess Jasmine. Now, Princess Jasmine, of course, can be found in the live action version of Aladdin. And in this live action film, Princess Jasmine is portrayed by actress Naomi Scott. As for the character design, while Naomi Scott's casting was heavily debated when she was originally announced in the role, I do think her portrayal of the character in this movie is extremely strong, and I ended up completely understanding why she was chosen for the role. She brings the strength to Jasmine that we expect from the original animated character, and wow, did they upgrade her wardrobe or what? <laughs> we get several new beautiful gowns for Princess Jasmine that she just looks absolutely stunning in. Likewise, her original teal ensemble that she donned in the original animated movie has been updated and upgraded. And I really do think it translates very, very well into live action. As for the songs in this movie, we get to hear Princess Jasmine sing a brand new song called Speechless, of which she sings half at the beginning of the movie and half towards the end. And we also get to hear her on A Whole New World. And it's the music that I think Naomi Scott absolutely dominates this movie in. She is, in my opinion, the best vocalist in this movie, and her songs are just stunning. While original animated Jasmine, as sung by actress Lea Salonga, is a very high and floaty soprano, Naomi Scott has a very strong belt range, which she gets to demonstrate not only in A Whole New World, but also in her brand new song, Speechless. Love that Princess Jasmine is finally getting a song of her own. And as for the level of success in translating the original animation to live action, while yes, it is important to note that we didn't necessarily get an actress who fully and accurately portrays the culture from which Princess Jasmine comes from, I do think we get a very strong performance from actress Naomi Scott. And I also think that the character of Princess Jasmine is much better written for the live action version. As spoiler alert, it is her at the end of this movie who gets to be the Sultan of Agrabah, of which she is absolutely deserving considering she was raised the Princess of Agrabah and knows what she's doing when it comes to watching others run a kingdom. Overall, I do think this version of the character is extremely successful, and I am very, very content with how Princess Jasmine was portrayed in the live-action version of Aladdin. Next, we are moving on up to number four on my list, who is Prince Eric. Now, Prince Eric can be found in the live-action adaptation of The Little Mermaid. In this version of The Little Mermaid, Prince Eric is performed by actor Jonah Howard King, and his character design 
is honestly quite faithful to the original animation. While yes, Eric had jet black hair in the original animation and now has a darker brown, I don't think that makes that much of a difference, as he is still sporting his white button-down shirt and his blue pants, and really the only thing missing is his little red scarf, but I don't really miss it that much. <laughs> And as for the song, I am so unbelievably happy that a brand new song was written for the live action version of The Little Mermaid for Prince Eric. Yes, the song that was written is Wild Uncharted Waters, and Jonah Howard King's performance of this song is just beautiful. Again, for not being a lifelong trained singer, I think he sounds just beautiful. I think there are sweeping instrumentals to this song, and I really do think it is perfectly written for his voice. And it's really nice to finally get a song for Prince Eric, considering he's one of the only Disney princes from the original animated movies that never got to sing. Getting to hear his struggle with wondering who that mysterious voice is and getting to see that inner monologue come out in a song absolutely helps us to gravitate more towards the character and to make him feel more deep and well-rounded than his animated counterpart. And as for the level of success in translation between the animation and live action, I honestly think that this character's translation is far more successful than the original animated movie. I think Jonah Howard King makes a lot of really interesting decisions in this movie that absolutely work perfectly. If you look at the animation, when Eric first sees Ariel transform back into a mermaid, he almost looks shocked and is standing upright and is almost keeping his distance from her as he's very shocked initially. However, when Jonah's Prince Eric sees Ariel transform back into a mermaid, his first instinct is to rush over to her and embrace her and to make sure she's okay and safe from Ursula. Likewise, when the main couple is touring Eric's kingdom, I think the extra runtime that was added to the live action movie gave us the right amount of time to see the relationship develop between Eric and his princess. And that extra time was very wisely used to show us what kind of a guy Prince Eric is. He does a lot of really sweet things for Ariel. And it really makes you understand why their relationship works and they really seem like kindred spirits in this version. Yes, I absolutely love the live action version of Prince Eric, and I am so happy that he turned out the way he did considering Prince Eric is one of my favorites of the original animated princes. But next we're moving on up to number three on my list, the final Disney prince on the list. So technically this prince is in first place, but we're gonna stick to the list for now. Yes, at number three is Prince Kit. Now you might be thinking to yourself, who is, who is Prince Kit from the original animated movies? Well, Prince Kit can be found in the live action adaptation of Cinderella. Now, while technically Prince Kit replaced Prince Charming, he's the same character, just with a ton more depth than his original animated counterpart. <laughs> Prince Kit is played by actor Richard Madden. And as for his character design, this is so accurate to the original animation that there's virtually no difference except his hair is a little bit different, but like, that's it. And it, it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> As for the songs, there are none. Unfortunately, we don't get to hear Richard Madden sing in this version. But as for the level of success in this translation of animation to live action, this is so unbelievably successful. Richard Madden's Prince Kit is the perfect fairy tale prince come true into live action. We get to see a backstory of him getting to meet Cinderella before the ball, which adds a lot more complexity to their relationship, and they also have significantly more in common than they do in the original animated movie. In the original animated movie, we get to see the prince for two, three minutes? tops. And in this version, we truly get a fully-fledged leading man out of Prince Kit. It is such a wonderful depiction of a Disney prince that this reaches the number one spot on my list of live-action Disney princes. Yes, Prince Kit is absolutely wonderful in the live-action version of Cinderella, and if you haven't seen this performance by Richard Madden, highly, highly, highly recommend. But on a very similar topic, we're gonna move on up to number two on my list. At number two is Cinderella. Now, while not my favorite animated version of a Disney princess, the live-action Cinderella is 
absolutely wonderful. The live-action version of Cinderella is, of course, from the live-action movie Cinderella. Again, go figure. <laughs> And in the live-action adaptation of this movie, the role of Cinderella is perfectly played by actress Lily James. Lily James is truly like the perfect quintessential Disney princess brought into real life. As for her character design, the character design is slightly different in terms of the clothing from the original animated movie, but Lily James herself does share a lot of the same traits that original Cinderella from the animation did. Of course, starting off with the iconic ball gown dress, Lily James's version is a lot more grandiose and dramatic than the original Cinderella's. It's also a much darker version of a blue than Cinderella's original silver dress. And while her rags aren't necessarily a direct translation of the animated versions, I do think that this is a very accurate depiction of what a Cinderella in rags would look like within this universe. As for the song sung by live-action Cinderella, we only have Lavender's Blue, but it is a very beautiful little lullaby sung by Lily James, and I think she sounds so, so beautiful in the recording of this movie. I love Lily James's voice. It is so sweet and so reminiscent of the original Cinderella, which was performed by Eileen Woods. And as for the level of success in this translation, this princess translation is so unbelievably successful. We learn about a whole new backstory with Cinderella's mother that we did not get in the original animation, which makes her entire backstory that much more tragic. We actually get to see young Cinderella with her mother and father, and the eventual weight of losing both of them really makes us latch on to Lily James's Cinderella in my opinion, significantly more than the original animated movie. In addition, we also have a lot more backstory with the prince, as we discussed when we were talking about Prince Kit. And so the two of them falling in love very quickly at the ball does make a little bit more sense. In addition, we also have a little moment in this movie that I absolutely love, which is when Cinderella finally faces her stepmother and departs with the final words that deliver probably the biggest blow to a Disney villain that we have seen, which is, I forgive you. This moment is so hard hitting, it isn't even funny, and absolutely takes down Lady Tremaine in this movie. In this version, I absolutely love getting to see Cinderella and Prince Kit have their happily ever after. Oh, and it's also wonderful that Prince Kit is actually the one also trying the slipper on Cinderella. Forgot to mention that. That's a big plot point, which also explains why Prince Kid is at number three. <laughs> but yes, the live-action Cinderella is just beautiful. I have no criticisms whatsoever. It is just stunning. But with that being said, we still have one more number to talk about. With that, friends, we are going to move on up to number one on my list today. I think a lot of you may know who it already is, but in case you aren't sure, make sure to leave it down below. Let me see if you guys can guess it before I tell you. Yes, at number one on my list of favorite live action princes and princesses is Ariel. Now, much like in my ranking of official Disney princesses, Ariel takes my number one spot. And let me tell you, it is unanimous between the live action and animation for me. I love this character with my whole heart. She will always be my number one but I am so excited to talk about this version of Ariel. Princess Ariel can be found in the live action adaptation of The Little Mermaid. And in this version, she is absolutely perfectly played by actress and singer, Halle Bailey. Oh, how I love Halle Bailey. I am her number one fan. I'm obsessed with her. She did my favorite Disney princess so right in this movie. As for the character design of this movie, it is very evident that Disney took a different direction from the original animation. As in the original animation, Ariel is a white mermaid with blue eyes and bright red fire engine hair. And so it was obviously inevitable that in casting Halle Bailey, they were intentionally going in a different direction. Different, but equally as beautiful as Halle Bailey is a beautiful black actress with dark eyes, and in this version, a much deeper hue of red hair, and also to mention that they intertwined her iconic locks into Ariel's beautiful new hairstyle. This is such a beautiful reimagining of an already extremely strong Disney princess, 
this version just warms my heart so, so much. And for any naysayers out there, I absolutely love to retell the story of her casting, in which Halle Bailey was one of the first actresses to audition for The Little Mermaid, and the casting director said, no one ever outdid her in her auditions. They saw her first and she set the bar. And so for me, in my personal opinion, and this is going to change, I highly doubt that any other actress, whether she was white, blue-eyed, or even had naturally fire engine red hair, could have outdone Miss Halle Bailey in this version of The Little Mermaid. Moving on to her songs, Ariel, of course, has the beautiful Part of Your World, Part of Your World reprise. She also gets a moment of singing in Under the Sea, and we also get to hear her beautiful voice in a few new songs, including for the first time, Part of Your World reprise 2, Vanessa's Trick, and also in the background of Jonah Howard King's song, Wild Uncharted Waters. Halle Bailey's voice is the best singing voice of any of the live-action princesses. You will not change my mind on that one. I'm sorry, you won't. <laughs> Her voice is such a gift to this movie. It is just stunning. Her version of Part of Your World is beautiful, and if you want to hear me talk more about it, you can go watch my ranking of Disney songs. But yes, I have absolutely nothing but praise for this movie. As for the level of success in translating the original character to the live-action world, I could not have been happier with this version of Ariel. Not only does she have all of the original character traits of the original animated Ariel, but she also becomes a true hero in her own movie, saving Prince Eric not twice like she does in the original animation, but three times, with also going up against Ursula in the final battle. And it makes it all the more powerful, having just seen what happened to her father, that she is the one to take control back over the sea. This shows how powerful of a character she is, yes, but also as a potential leader of not only the surface, but also the undersea kingdom. Gosh, I wish and hope every single day that The Little Mermaid gets a live action sequel in the future with actress Halle Bailey, and of course returning Jonah Howard King, of course, to the Prince Eric role. But yes, absolutely at number one on my list is Halle Bailey's version of Ariel, The Little Mermaid, and I absolutely could not end this list any other way. If you know me and my love for Ariel, She'll always be at number one. And as a final little recap, my official list from least to most favorite of the live-action Disney princes are Prince Philip from Maleficent, Prince Philip from Maleficent, Mistress of All Evil, Aladdin, The Beast, Prince Eric, and Prince Kit. And for the princesses from least favorite to most favorite, Mulan, Belle, Aurora, Jasmine, Cinderella, and Ariel. Whew, but with that, friends, we have ranked all 12 of Disney's live-action princes and princesses. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about all of these wonderful live-action Disney characters. If you enjoyed today's video, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on future magic from me. Likewise, I'm also going to put a playlist up above to a full playlist of all of my Disney princess videos. In case you want to hear more about my ranking of Disney princesses, their dresses, and their voices. But yes, thank you so much for the love on all of these videos. I'm having so much fun creating Disney content for you guys, and I am feeling all the love and could not be more grateful. And if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And you can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and Snapchat. But with that, friends, I'll say stay magical. And until next time, I'll see you all real soon.